There are a ton of reasons to cut circles out of wood. Maybe you want to make small wheels for a car, or you think it'd be nice to have a round side table, or perhaps you want to make a sign to hang in your shop. For me, I need to cut circles so I can make bats for my wife's pottery wheel. There are a few different ways to cut circles from wood, but all of the ones I know of need some sort of jig to be made. You can make circles with the table saw or the router if you set up a jig for them. But I think the best way to make circles is the bandsaw. So I'll show you how I made my circle jig for the bandsaw. Later in the video, I'll talk about why the bandsaw is the best, in my opinion. You can make this jig for almost any bandsaw. All you really need is a fence or a nice straight edge that's parallel to the blade. The idea is you cut a slot in a nice flat piece of wood, then you can drill a bunch of holes at various distances from the slot, and this will allow you to make circles of many sizes. You can use just about any type of wood as your base, as long as it's flat, but it's better if your wood is smooth so your workpiece slides well. For my jig, I'm going to use some old melamine that I have lying around. This piece is actually from the destruction of my old workbench. My first step will be to clean up this melamine. Since it was part of my old bench, it's filled with holes and covered in glue. But somewhere in there is a nice clean section. When you have your board ready, you can add the stopper to the bottom. This stop block keeps you from pushing the jig all the way through the saw. The alternative is to put a stop block at the back of your table, but that would need to be done every time you use this jig. With the stopper attached to the front of the jig, that's one less step to worry about when it comes time to cut a circle. The idea for this jig is to be able to use it over and over again, and for it to be quick and simple to set up. The stopper is just a scrap of wood that I cut on the table saw and then trimmed to length with the crosscut sled. The measurements for this don't matter too much. It just needs to butt up against the bandsaw's table. For mine, it also needs to be thin enough to clear the bar that holds the fence. So just make sure yours won't bump into anything. And to keep mine low profile, I countersunk the screws before attaching it to my base. Now it's time to cut into the base. This is where you need your fence, or whatever you can use in place of a fence. How far the fence is from the blade is not really too important for this part. I didn't even bother to measure this out. I just moved the fence over a random amount and locked it into place. I suppose you would not want to have the fence too close to the blade, just so this little section of the base is not so thin that it could easily snap off. Once you have your fence set up, run the base along the fence until your stop block contacts the table. Now you can just move the fence out of the way. This jig will run in the miter track on your table. So much like I did for the crosscut sled, we need to make a runner to fit this channel. And this is pretty much the same process that I use for the stopper underneath. In my case, it's exactly the same. The runner that I cut just happened to fit the miter track perfectly. So that saved me a step. Since I already had my runner ready to go, I placed some washers in the miter track to raise the runner above the table's surface so that I can glue the base to it. For this, I'm gonna use some CA glue. Since I'm using melamine, wood glue is probably not going to hold well enough. The glue bond here doesn't really need to be all that strong, because we're going to add screws later. But I want it to hold well enough, so that I can get the runner out of the miter track without pulling the whole thing apart. And I don't think regular wood glue would be strong enough for that. The CA glue bonds really quick, and it held together well enough to pull the jig off the table without detaching the runner. Now, I can just add some countersunk screws to make sure it won't ever come off. Now this thing's ready for the next step. Since I want it to be reusable, and I want it to work with various circle diameters, I'm going to add a hole every half inch so I can make a wide variety of different circle sizes. These holes are set 90 degrees from the center of the blade when the jig is on the table. And they're used for the pin that you'll rotate your workpiece on. You can use whatever kind of pin you want for this, but I'm going to use a nail with the head cut off. And my nail was pretty thick and difficult to cut, and it left a bit of a jagged mess. So I ground it down a bit to make it easier to use. Now the jig's ready to test. To cut a circle, you need to find the center of your material. Then, make a small hole for the pin. And then set your pin into the hole you want for the size of circle you want.
That worked really well. I think this is better than the table saw jig because it's just easier to use. The table saw version involves gradually cutting away chunks of wood till the workpiece is almost round, then slowly trimming it into a perfect circle. And I think the bandsaw is better than the router version because a router bit is a lot thicker than a bandsaw blade and therefore has to remove a lot more material. Also, depending on the thickness of your wood, you may need to make several passes with the router to cut out your circle. The one downside I can think of for the bandsaw method is that it can leave the edge looking a little rough. You may see some blade marks around the edge of the circle, so you might need to sand down a bit more. But I think it's still faster than the other two methods. Let me know what you think. What's the best way to cut a circle into a piece of wood? Have I missed any other common ways to cut circles? And click here to see how I made the crosscut sled.